Okay, um, thanks everyone who came for the closing session. This is actually my second in-person OpenSUSE, OpenSUSE event since I joined the board like three years ago. The first one was OpenSUSE, OpenSUSE Asia Summit, which was really great, and then came a little pandemic. So I'm really excited to be together with like people on the board I've been working for years and haven't haven't met and same same for all of you. So lest we forget, last things first, I would like to extend a really big thank you to everyone who made this event possible. I mean Doug is Mr. Open Suze Summit, definitely. But I mean everyone who came, everyone who submitted presentations, came to stage, shared ideas, interacted um, our video audio guys. This is actually a really professional event. Um, like, I mean, you get on bigger stages, the kind of service. So let's give them a big applause. <clears throat> because that's not actually super easy to make it work that well, both on stage and then transmitting all of that from multiple rooms across the internet live and recording and sharing. Um, but there's also other people who have helped with organi um, organizing, so I don't want to mention all. In any way, I'm pretty sure um, I've forgotten. Thanks everyone for being here. And with that, as customary, last session of the event is an update from the OpenSUSE board. And Axel is our numbers guy. What am I, the what? <laughs> what? You are the, num numbers the numbers guy. The numbers guy, oh no. You give us the data. It's just the easy part, that's why I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how has uh, the OpenSUSE community developed? Um, it's a little bit difficult to say, but metrics.opensuse.org gives us usually quite a well um, impression about that. And I took a snapshot here over the last two, a little bit more than two years. Uh, what we can see here, the amount of uh, downloads was around 300k. And from March, April onwards, 2021, we got an increase of users, which is nearly about 70% plus. And since then, we're stable around 500K unique machines, let's say it that way. Mm. Cannot really say what the, the, the absolute number is because we do not see any updates that are coming from local repositories or local caches, but this is I would say the low number of users or the low number of installations that we're having. Taking a look at the development of uh, the systems, what is being used, here we have a snapshot from 2020. Um, at the same point in time, the snapshot of 2022. Um, in both cases, the, the recent Leap release is having the most users directly followed from, from Tumbleweed. So Tumbleweed currently has about 145K installations, uh, about 50% more is the current Leap 15.3. Interesting enough, here is some Leap 15.4 showing up already. So Hard to believe, but we have 15,000 better installations at that point in time. Uh, on the very low end, we have one 10.2 installation down here. Probably somewhere forgotten in a uh, uh, wardrobe room or something like that. Um, if I count together the 15.3, the tumbleweed, and the 15.4, uh, we have about 100k or 20% of the users is currently on unsupported releases. Don't know what the reason is, but uh, we should make them upgrade and the upgrade process on, on, on OpenSUSE is pain-free, so to say. 
What about the OpenSUSE members? Uh, on the last snapshot for the uh, OpenSUSE Asia Summit, we had about 486 members. Uh, a year ago, uh, or a year later, in October 2020, we had 512, and the current status is 541 users. And uh, this one here, the one, the latest user is already there. That's Patrick, Patrick Fitzgerald. There he is, who dedicated his heart more or less to OpenSUSE. <laughs> Uh, we have as well two emeritus members, um, which is the new unofficial state as well. We're coming to that a little bit later. Can I interrupt you for a second, Axel? Uh, we actually have about 300 emeritus members, if you find the right list, which is hidden somewhere in the bowels of Connect. But we can talk about that later. That, that was an information I got from the ele election officials. Um, then I need to talk to them about how to find the right information. Okay. It's more than two. It's several hundred. So, uh, since the last OSC, uh, a lot of things have kind of happened. Uh, first, SUSE went public. I don't really have anything to say about that other than congratulations, I guess. Um, the board elections happened in 2021, uh, and that's how we got Maurizio here. Uh, and we got a new treasurer who unfortunately couldn't be here because of professional reasons, Sid Zbirda. You know who you are, you're awesome. And their board members are all listed, of course, on the lovely website. And I think, yeah, here we go. Pictures of the current board members. I don't know what Gerald is looking up to, but it, sound, it seems pretty uh, interesting. <laughs> uh, Maurizio probably has uh, done less drinks since he took his picture. I was a wine merchant for a very small time. Yeah. And, and there's Attila who couldn't join who couldn't Yeah, who could person. not make it. But uh, he's a joy to talk to as well. So continuing on to what happened since the last OSC, we did have the Asia Summit in virtually in 2021. I have learned from that Asia Summit that I am not going to try to do that again because uh, Indian time zone in New York is uh, unpleasant. Um, Asia Summit again is virtual in 2022. Do we know where it technically is supposed to be based in yet? Okay. It's it's it's. I mean, time zone wise, like what is it, Alex? Mm, Central Asia, roughly. Okay. So, okay. Um, yeah. Um, moving on past that, uh, a big thing that we've done in the past uh, eight months or so is get a uh, moderation team formalized, and one of the first things that they did was try to formalize the behavior of how they uh, formalize a code of conduct for them to be able to. Um, govern membership behaviors and to figure out like when people are being out of line and, and, and handle that. We've also, something I'm personally very proud of is that we are doing public board meetings since um, May of 21. And we have a public ticket tracker on code.opensusa.org that, that anyone in the community can, uh, if they want to bring up an issue with the board to discuss, they can just file it there. We can, we can leave feedback in the ticket, and then we can bring it into a meeting and have a broader discussion, things like that. And something that uh, Herchan, Maurizio, and Emily, and Lubos uh, have done a great job of starting and, and bringing light public community meetings where people can get together and learn about each other and do stuff, and it's just... It's made me so happy to see like this more avenues of communication and doing more things of that sort. Um, we also have the Leap Feature meetings, which is um, Lubos and I, along with anyone who comes and shows up. Again, another public meeting. Yeah, Luna and, and several others show up from time to time, where we uh, discuss community requests for features or where they want to help and contributions and kind of shepherd them through the 
arcane process that is SUSE Linux Enterprise to bring, uh, to, to improve the quality of OpenSUSE Leap for the broader community. Uh, and then of course there's the release engineering meetings that have been going on for a long time in a time period that I can't wake up for. But uh, uh, it, it's all great stuff and I'm really happy to see um, a growing tendency for people to start communicating and publishing and bringing out all the cool stuff that they're doing in the project. And of course, uncountable hundreds of tumbleweed snapshots. Last year, of course, Leap uh, 15.3 and 15.4 is sort of here now. I think it's going to be formally here next week. Yeah, so Lubos just said the gold master image is technically available. It'll be formally announced next Wednesday. So yay, new Leap release. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, and we also have a new distribution flavor with uh, OpenSUSE Leap Micro, although I think it uses a different versioning scheme. Yeah, so Leap Micro 5.2, released in mid-May. It'll do things. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Neil. Um, yeah. Uh, we thought as board to, it was important to share some of the things that we are actually working on. I mean, this, this is not a complete list, but it's some of the key things that are currently ongoing. Uh, one of them, uh, first one on the list is formalize uh, Meritus membership status, which uh, essentially means we are trying to um, finalize some of the rules around how, how someone would sort of like from a, a regular member become an Emeritus member. Uh, it's quite a, of a complicated process, it, it's, it's taking some time, but uh, the reason is because it essentially means that we need to change some of the rules uh, around the memberships. And obviously this will be shared with, uh, with, with the rest of the community uh, as, as we go along. Um, it sort of ties into uh, what we put in quotation marks, uh, the constitution of the project. Um, right now, um, we have the um, uh, elections, um, uh, elections rules, the guiding principles, the code of conduct, uh, with a lot of, and not only that, but with a lot of information that is a little bit scattered all over different documents. The idea is to really uh, push for um, a more uh, comprehensive single, single document that we, we call the constitution of the project. And this would obviously uh, in, invoke from, from the board uh, an engagement that, uh, with the community in terms of uh, either a consultation, uh, proposals, and most likely a vote from the, from the membership, uh, from the uh, members who have voting rights uh, in the Open Source project. Um, another uh, work in progress uh, is the moderation consistent across platforms, which means essentially uh, we have a lot of different communication platforms, uh, mailing lists, uh, forums, social media, IRC, uh, Discord, metrics, and so on. Uh, we, what we are trying to do is to create um, a way which is done by the moderation team uh, to have a standardized way to deal with uh, conflicts, for example, or a, a breach of uh, essentially what would be the open source guiding principles or the code of conduct, which we just implemented, uh, and have it, have it made in a consistent way. And the way we achieved that was uh, to start creating a moderation team, uh, which is, uh, rep includes representatives from each platform, but it's still a work in pro progress because we haven't yet uh, put together uh, a formal, I would say, uh, we haven't really announced it yet. This is something that I wish uh, uh, to do soon, uh, hopefully in the next few weeks, uh, where we also explain what the moderation team, what it does, and uh, essentially what it covers in terms of um, uh, mandate that we, we are giving them. Um, Another point that, we, uh, that is a work in progress is, uh, for the board is to give assistance to both uh, election officials and membership officials. 
by providing uh, some kind of tool um, that would essentially make their job easier. That would can be summarized in, in short as uh, OpenSUSE account management. In, in one sentence, it's uh, how to handle memberships, uh, so membership requests, for example, or TSP, which is the travel support program, uh, so fi financial support for people who, who need that program to attend the Open Source Conference, for example, and, uh, and other things, but where there's a, a work in progress, and uh, this is something that is more about like uh, giving the support in, 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 uh, in with, the, with the officials that are directly working on this. Uh, last is uh, Gerald's soapbox, which uh, I think Gerald will step on something <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and give a talk about uh, what are his thoughts about uh, anything that is uh, open source related. So, Gerald, please. <laughs> I won't break the speakers, don't worry. Um, the board, meet board meetings being public um, or how in the release engineering meetings are run to me are some really good examples and if you attended the, the conference two years ago I showed a picture of islands and oh, it's nice. um, or lots of stars <laughs> that that are or were not were not connected and I, I believe as a project we have gone in the right direction but I also believe there is more work we can and should do. There is various individuals and teams who are doing great work. And I think talking a little bit more about the great work, sharing with others, is something we could do more about. And it has benefits because we might, not, we might actually get more help <laughs> and not feel that alone. And we have seen it with uh, some of the things that Neil um, or, or Mao just presented, there is actually people like Emily who stepped up and said, I'm, I'm interested, I want, to, I want to help create a code of, Kodak, code of conduct, etc." So uh, by sharing what we do, the release engineering team, the board, and, and, and all the other teams, and by sharing who we are and what we do in, in the first place, I believe we can build more community, more contribution, and we can also give Doug and others more material to promote because what Doug doesn't know or others um, supporting OpenSUSE and social, they can't promote. And to two concrete examples of what actually happened in, in the last couple of months is big thanks to the membership officials and the release engineering uh, folks because they, they reworked the wiki pages. Um, you know, so that you could actually see how can you reach those groups, who is on those teams. When I joined the board, it, it, it was actually not easily possible to know who is a membership official, and now, now that's very clear. One of the problems, it turns out, was they didn't actually have right access to their own wiki. And I mean, once we, once we realized that, it, it could be addressed. And so that's my stepping on and off the soapbox if you do stuff, please share it. Share it on the project mailing list. Create a little wiki for your team. Um, go, so go social, go to conferences, go to our conferences, um, OpenSUSE Asia Summit, and, and just promote so that we can, we can grow and nurture. And and now, it's me, it's me again. Back to the <laughs> fork. What Gerald's like. Um, okay. Uh, well, it's yeah, just uh, as uh, kind of like a concluding thing. Uh, as I don't know how many of you in, in here were at the talk that we actually had on on, uh, on Thursday as the opening one, but we would like to uh, present some of the feedbacks that we were given. And before I go on, before I go on, I would really like to thank you, everyone that approached the board, uh, whether it was verbally or emailed, some people also emailed the board with some feedbacks about it, and we thought that we would at least uh, share some of the thoughts from uh, a few of you community members uh, that were shared with us. And um, 
Uh, one, uh, one first uh, point here is uh, we were told as a suggestion to perhaps consider a consulting period to gather feedbacks before we, we take uh, uh, actions or decision. Uh, one example could be uh, as we recently had these open letters uh, that we wanted to sign as board. Uh, we, that, that's something that could be done in, in, that, in that direction as well. Um, we added if possible because uh, for reasons of timing or sometimes it is confidential uh, information that we cannot share. So uh, we have to also take into those things in, in, into consideration before, before we, we start a consultation period for that. But I think this uh, is actually something that we could talk about and, uh, and, and maybe uh, have further discussions about. Um, we were also uh, told that um, the pursuit of a legal structure is something that uh, we should we should do, um, and uh, if we do go down that way, uh, try to keep it uh, as simple as possible. So um, there are many ways that we could we go down we could go down that road, uh, depending on, on on what's necessary to do. Another feedback on this was that perhaps uh, it could be, um, I don't like to use the contingency plan word, but it would be something that we keep uh, there as, a, as something that we could use if when the time, when the right time really counts, but we already have the steps and everything in place to pursue uh, without uh, <laughs> jumping too much around it. Um, we were also told that we should have a written framework of governance procedures. Um, that means essentially to uh, clarify better how we, how, we take, how we can take certain decisions or how we want to take certain decisions. Um, and also we were told um, that the board should be an enabler and in this sense it's more of a, uh, the board should be a point of reference for those who are seeking like uh, to help to, to pursue like a certain project, uh, contact the right person, uh, any sort of like uh, issue, problem solving that uh, it's uh, preventing uh, them from, uh, from uh, achieving their goals. Um, we put a link uh, for one of the feedbacks that we received on the, it's an interpad and it's essentially is the, the email, one of the emails that we received. Uh, which uh, I think, uh, I mean, I would invite you to, to go and take a look because it has quite a lot of details and uh, perhaps it could also give some, inspire some of you to, to add on and, and get back to us as well. And on that, I would really encourage anybody to, uh, to continue to reach out to us uh, with ideas even after the conference is over. Uh, it could be through email, uh, through the board uh, at opensuse.org or it could be directly, uh, personally, or in any way that you feel more comfortable, but please do reach out and, and give us more feedbacks, as some of you have already done. Um, could also be on the project mailing list. On project mailing list? Yeah, it doesn't have to be ah, yeah, sorry. private. You so could also whatever, write, yeah. whatever works for you. Yeah, ah, yes, sure. Uh, the, 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 the board issue tracker, if... Uh, if you want to use that, that's actually perfectly fine. That means that we will talk about these issues also during the next board meetings. Speaking of which, we have an upcoming board meeting on, on Monday, correct? Or is no, next we month? wanted to cancel that, but ah, okay. I'll send out a mail. Okay, anyway, whenever we have the next board meeting, it's public, so if you want to add more on, on, on more uh, discussions about this topic, uh, please, you're welcome to join us and, uh, and open up yeah. uh, the topic. And okay. of course, not to forget, uh, we just collected here the information that we received already. By the way, the, the Etherpad was, was started by Bernhard. Thank you for that. Uh, which recommendations, which remarks do you have right now that we can discuss or that we would like to discuss with you? There is one from, from Simon. So, being the person that spent more time looking at foundations than anyone else, in the project in the last four years. I'll probably give one little bit of feedback, and that is Simon, the Enlightenment, for Simon, the Enlightenment maintainer, 
or the fish maintainer or the general developer or user. Um, the foundation isn't a big thing, so it doesn't become a high thing on my priority list. For Simon, who was on the board for four years, I know exactly how and why we need a legal entity. And so my feedback from that is I wouldn't necessarily expect much response from the community and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think it'll become, if we go in this direction, it'll become something that the board's going to need to push a lot along with certain members of the community like myself that have some sort of interest in this and if we get to the point in however many months or whenever where we have a proposal for a foundation that doesn't fundamentally change the structure of what the project is now, then I think it'll be very easy to bring a lot of the community on board with that, but expecting that the community is going to give a lot of feedback and do a lot of work in the early stages um, is probably not going to happen at the same time. Knowing this community well, whatever we come up with, I expect there'll be two or three people that disagree with it once there is a solid proposal, and that is also fine. And so I would expect a few things before, a few things during, and a few things after. And the fact that most people don't put in much interest is probably a good thing. And so that's probably my feedback on that particular topic. Any other questions? Or yeah, I'm points? just thinking about an answer, of course. Uh, we've spent many hours in discussing uh, foundation topics or not. Uh, clearly, the, um, the board can give the initial kickstart for this, but nevertheless, it could not be driven by the, by, by the board itself, so it has to have some support out of the community for that. So, yeah, I'm sh sure, obviously, the community needs to have, needs to support it, but I think unless the board is, unless there is someone very passionate about it in the community that is not on the board, I don't think anyone is, anything is going to happen unless the board is pushing forward going, this is our suggested approach, these are the next steps, what feedback do you have? Or probably as a starting point, we are looking at this issue, is there anyone else that wants to be involved and join a group on it um, with some members of the board? And then I think if there is a group of people, then great, they can push it. But I think that most of that group is going to have to be the board and it's going to be, have to be the board pushing it through each step and bringing proposals to the community. Otherwise, I don't think someone random in the community is going to step up and take the lead on it. I think that's going to have to come from the board. So my, my thought about this is sure we can probably and we might necessarily have to do a lot of the legwork and a lot of the, the the actual steps towards whatever we actually decide to do for a legal entity but i view the existence of a foundation as a critical piece of making the community have a very real sense of ownership within the project uh, in a way that they are part of making open SUSE last forever, really. Like, and anyone who cares about the continued existence of open SUSE in some form or fashion will have, hopefully, the desire to look over it at least and tell us whether they're at least okay with what we are doing. Because if, they, if it's not even that, I, I honestly, I don't know why we would be doing this. So I would say, sure, that's a reasonable expectation, but but for that but for that to happen, there has to be something for people to look over, and I don't, from my experience in the last four years, there is not a group of community people jumping up and down, being willing to write that that's something. There might be a couple of people. I'm still somewhat interested. There might be a couple of others that are interested in helping in that process, but. I think for, if you consider the majority of members, they are, prob they are probably all very interested in looking over it, looking over whatever, we whatever gets proposed, 
and picking it apart in great detail, they're probably not interested in being the ones that come up with the thing that everyone looks over. So that was, in a nutshell, that was kind of basically what my summary was. And um, I will be providing, uh, I'm going to look, up, look out for about four different countries and I'll, I'll, res I'll re prepare a report that you guys can look over um, for foundations in Germany, US, Ireland and UK. Good. Yay. Thank you very much, Darren. The least Pat I could do. <laughs> Sorry? It's the least I can do. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Hello. Questions? Anyone? Questions, remarks on this, or because we always end with an FAQ, uh, not an FAQ, Q&A. <laughs> Um, any other topics? Yeah, Marina. Uh, always on uh, this foundation topic, uh, I mean, this is something uh, that is uh, uh, a recurring need that uh, from time to time is uh, uh, popping out. And uh, I'm wondering uh, um, which are the differences with uh, all the other attempts. And uh, in particular, uh, which are the uh, discussions, if any, uh, with uh, with Suze because I mean at the moment uh, Suze is our <laughs> legal entity, and I think that if we really want to bootstrap something uh, independent, uh, something that is an open source foundation, uh, we can simply uh, tell uh, to the company we are leaving uh, goodbye. I think should be a cooperation and uh, something done uh, uh, together. So not only feedback from the community, but I think we should uh, really include uh, everyone uh, involved and. If that one is the direction, I'm really happy to be, <laughs> to try again <laughs> to support on this. Um, yeah, totally. I mean, this is, this is not the kind of event where you, you go to SUSE and then say, here is everything, just <laughs> sign. <laughs> um, yeah, that will not work. Oh, so by the way, agreed. please donate some uh, hundred Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you give us the monies, here's the things, right on the dotted line, done. <coughs> Feedback I've given to I've 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 given to the board and and others, I think as like this week again, is I don't believe we and this is now the Open SUSE we um, have our act together sufficiently. I think there is parts on governance, on getting the election rules, constitution. Um, code of conduct is something we have in place now, um, et cetera, in place, and then at least some rough consensus within the project before it makes sense, in my opinion, makes sense to approach SUSE and, and start the process. And why I'm, I mean, one reason I'm saying that we had a couple of cases in the last months, I think even just with this specific board, where we got very clear feedback, the board shouldn't do this or that, um, which would not be consistent with having a foundation. So it's, it's, um, it's I think Axel pointedly calls it, if people want the board to be the janitors, that is a possible role. It's somewhat more a role the board has right now the board needs, by definition of a foundation, has more respons in a foundation or a similar construct, has more responsibility, legal responsibility, fin financial responsibility that board members can get sued about. No, um, I don't want to be sued. So I think that doesn't mean stalling it, but getting, getting uh, no pun intended, <laughs> the foundations in place, moving certain things, um, all of the work in progress items are part of that. Then putting a straw man in place, having having conversation in in the larger open source community, um, and only when we have rough consensus and totally there will be some people who disagree, but if there is community consensus, 
then have a and better understanding then have a, a meaningful conversation with SUSE. Yeah, to add just a little bit onto what Gerald was saying. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, to add a little bit of what Gerald is saying, um, one of the things that I'm hoping we're going to do if, if, you know, as part of, regardless of whether we take this path or not of setting a legal entity or any of this other stuff, I want us to kind of move forward with trying to formalize our structure, set things up, be able to essentially play pretend properly with all of this stuff so that, you know, when we when it goes into the real world, when it goes into legal effect, um, we've got the right practices in place, we're doing the right things, and and people are comfortable with all the with all the things that are required to support a legal entity or of some sort. Or so Sorry, um, Simon. Second, I responded please, to here first. I, I missed that part in responding to to Marina. So what is different? I think I I was very clear and said, and maybe the answer is not now. But this is what I think I said on said earlier or on day one um, is I've heard we want foundation, want foundation. So do some work in the direction, but not necessarily with the only possible outcome of a foundation. Maybe the outcome is not for a time being. That's also okay. But having this lingering foundation thingy up in the air and not happening, but also not not happening is, is a little weird. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to briefly answer Marina's question as well, if that's okay. So I think that one of the things happened, because obviously when you're on the board, we got a fair way through a proposal, but then at that point, we got to the discussing it with Sousa part, and all of Sousa's management changed two or three times over over the next couple of years. And so I think a big reason that it hasn't gone anywhere since then is it wasn't a great time to discuss it with new management. So if you're wondering why the last idea took a took a or stop or pause. Part of it is equally what these guys are saying. I think part of it is equally because of the continued changes in SUSE, it made it very hard to have the right people within SUSE to have that discussion. And it's not something you want to lob on a new CTO yeah. or CEO or something a few weeks in and they're still getting their head around things. And so I think that is an equal reason why the last reason, why the last attempt kind of stopped as someone who spent a lot of time pushing that. Yeah, you're perfectly right, Simon. And I think uh, this is also the reason why we shouldn't see this foundation carved in stone. So I would really like to speak about a legal structure for OpenSUSE, which could be a foundation with a lot of money behind, according to German law, what Patrick just proposed. Let's take a look at uh, the UK situation or uh, a Belgium foundation or there are various other legal structures that could help us in the long run without having a huge investment from, from Zuse, which is a pain point I, I understand at the moment, right? Yeah. Yeah, my question goes back to moderation earlier. Um, so like with the mod team and the code of conduct being set up, is there plans to take control, I guess, from the board or from the open SUSE community of like the various channels that exist now that are semi-official, like the Reddit or the Discord or those? Is there like a central kind of plan or area for like uh, how these channels are all used? So uh, the board is not taking control directly of, of those things, of those channels. Uh, we are delegating the role of moderation to uh, what we are calling the moderation team. So each platform, as I, I said earlier, we, as representatives, and then among themselves, they, they have the ability to make certain decisions and enforce the code of conduct. So as board, we, uh, with the help of the community, actually most of the work was done by the community, and, uh, and they submitted a code of conduct to us, uh, was especially for, to have uh, a standardized way to enforce certain way, uh, regulations, if you want to call them like that, on how to interact on those platforms. So uh, pretty much we are uh, allowing the moderation team to sort of have, uh, let's say, 
decision making on uh, how to how to apply that. Yes, they are coordinating it, yes. One last question, maybe? Yeah, there's just time for one last question. We'll have to wrap it up. Does anyone have any? Okay. If not, a brief public service announcement on behalf of DAC. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank our sponsors. What uh, I like to mention is the beer garden will open at five if you are going to stick around but before that happens would you please help me in stacking these chairs along the side in rows of 15 and for the hackers among you that's zero xf <laughs> and i am not to be stacked okay <laughs> but those great devices down there thanks everyone for coming thanks everyone who made this possible and uh, happy stacking.